Hello, uh, this is my first Let's Play. I'm going to do a series on the new campaign trail. It's a simulation game where basically you can play as any... In any U.S. Pres in American presidential election. Um, you... So yeah, you, you, it, so this one is a mod. So these are a series of mods for the game. Uh, this one is eighteen forty eight. Uh, so you can play as, uh, Henry Clay in the eighteen forty eight presidential election. So Henry Clay was an American politician in the nineteenth century, and he's one of the foremost American politicians. But he was never elected president. But he ran several times for president. But he was never elected. But in this mod, you can get him elected as president. You, even though in... in But I'll, I'll just show you the... So the last four years are not being kind to America. Uh, James President James K. Polk's annexation of the neighboring Republic of Texas and the war with Re Mexico it provoked has heightened the slavery debate to its tensest levels yet. With Polk keeping his promise of a one-term presidency, Lewis's cast ideal of popular sovereignty that each territory and state could, should choose its status of slavery for itself, has taken the Democratic nomination. On the other side, an old Whig hero makes his last run at office. Henry Clay will take the mantle one more time, even if its odds are slim. Henry Clay holds a healthy lead in the minds of most Americans, including those who supported Clay's candidacy four years ago. The, gate, the great compromiser must chip away at Cass's lead, or else once again be right rather than president. So Clay, so this is his fifth bid for the presidency and his third nomination by a political party. Uh, Clay had initially not intended to re enter the 1848 race. The brutish conduct and opportunism expressed by runner-up Zachary Taylor, who in our world won the Whig nomination and then the presidency, uh, compelled Clay to give the presidency a final shot. He holds great sway in the Whig party. In fact, he, he basically founded it. Uh, he's basically its, like, leader and... He almost single-handedly founded it, but his age and numerous failed runs have greatly damaged his political capital with the public. Whig and Democratic pundits alike agree that Clay's nomination likely means a brutal loss for the Whigs, unless he can find a way to excite the Union with his antiquated ideas, or if some rift in the Democratic Party occurs, a prospect that might not be too out of the question because... Former President Martin Van Buren is running in this election, and he ran as a Free Soil candidate. So this, the Free Soilers were anti-slavery part, political party, and they predated the Republicans. And they ended up splitting the vote in the North for the Democrats, and, and allowed, in our world, it allowed it for uh, Zachary Taylor to win the election. In this, though, it's Henry Clay that got the nomination. And you have a few uh, vice presidential selections. I'll be selecting Fillmore. Because uh, I think that that's probably who the candidate would have been uh, if Clay was elected. He was the original. Millard Fillmore was the original uh, vice presidential candidate for 1848 in our world. And he was a a Taylor supporter, Zachary Taylor supporter. And he also eventually, be, he became president because Taylor died in 1850 of, uh, it was septic. He died of, uh, like the septic system for the White House was really poor and there was sewage and he ended up, uh, Zachary Taylor died because of it. And Fillmore replaced him. But that might not happen in this, but anyway, off to, um, Fillmore was the favorite at the convention as it is a resident New Yorker, a key state in any election. Importantly, Fillmore has been a moderate on the slavery issue, 
which is especially contentious this election cycle and generally aligns with you on domestic policy besides. Although Fillmore did not actually back you at the convention and is less than enthusiastic about your prospects for victory, his presence on that ticket would surely do you some good in the North. So yeah, he is a North. It would ba definitely balance the ticket sectionally if he was nominated. This guy, Abbott Lawrence, so he's a fair bit more ideologically aligned with Clay's policy, like internal improvements than others. And he's a vocal supporter of railroad construction. Out of all the vice presidential candidates, he's surely the happiest to work with you in 1848. Uh, Lawrence is basically a, a Clay supporter. And additionally, despite being a Massachusetts native, Lawrence is dubbed a cotton wig for his every moderation on slavery. The cotton wigs were basically the doe faces of the Whig party. They were uh, northern Whigs who supported the southern the southern Whigs, so slavery and that kind of stuff, uh, which would help marginally in the south. So on the other hand, Lawrence is quite well off, and he wouldn't do uh, anything to shake Clay's well-known reputation as a career politician. I wouldn't select Lawrence because, like us, like there's also a bunch of Taylor supporters, Zachary Taylor supporters, and you want to unite the Whig base as much as possible, especially because Clay's a perennial Henry Clay is a perennial presidential candidate, which means he's run multiple times for president and lost. So you want as much as possible to unite the base and keep them going. Now, what I said earlier about Henry. I kind of regret that now because Henry Clay was definitely pivotal, but there were several other important Whigs like Daniel Webster and Harrison, William Henry Harrison, the first Whig president. So, but Clay was instrumental in founding the party because he was, I think he was probably Jackson, Andrew Jackson's chief opponent. That's how the Whig party formed. It was on opposition to Andrew Jack, President Andrew Jackson's policies. So I apologize for that, saying that earlier. Uh, so Thomas Ewing, uh, he is a diehard Whig who served on the short-lived Harrison administration because William Henry Harrison died. He was elected in 1840. He was the first Whig president, William Henry Harrison, and he, was, he died eight years prior to this election. So he, importantly, resigned upon the Maverick Tyler's repeal of the Banking Act. So John Tyler succeeded uh, Harrison as president when he died. He also died uh, due to, it's thought, due to the bad plumbing in the White House. There was sewage, like I said earlier. And Tyler was basically only a Whig in name only. He was, he was like a state's rights Democrat, uh, John Tyler was. And he... He, he now he did support Henry Clay, I, th I think, but it, it was only because I think probably because he was a southerner. That's probably the only reason. I mean, Ty Tyler was because he was dissatisfied because they thought they weren't extreme enough with their state's rights. So it's effectively during his whole presidency, John Tyler was an independent. But anyway, um, he's both an experienced pick and well liked by the party. He carries little baggage other than his fondness for Catholicism, despite his official birth as a Presbyterian. Unfortunately for him, rumors of a secret Catholic president do not see, sit well, definitely, for many Southern Whig voters. Uh, his advanced age would only, your advanced age would only heighten those worries, and his selection would certainly lead to religion becoming salient Another salient against the ticket. So you, you don't want to pick him either. He, he's too, like like you said, he's too pro-Catholic. And Catholics were definitely not liked that. Like there was a lot of, there was a lot of like hatred against Irish people. And like, it, no, there wasn't as many Italians back then, but um, Italian Americans, but yeah, you don't. You want to. You want to have your base united as much as possible. So you want Fillmore. That's what I pick anyway. I've heard Lawrence might be better, but I think just for the sake. I mean, 
objectively, I think it, in real life, I think Fillmore would probably be the best option if this actually, if this scenario happened and Clay was nominated for the Whig Party nomination in 1848. So following the Democratic National Convention of 1848, Martin Van Buren and a group of barn burner Democrats, that was Van Buren's faction of Democrats, have decided to form their own party, the Free Soil Party, which will be nominating Van Buren for president. So because most of the Democrats, um, most of the Free Soilers are ex-Democrats, they'll be hurting, they'll be hurting the Democrats more than you, um, there are, well, both, though, I think it goes 50-50, but it's more like, it's more like 55 to 50, because, like I like, Martin Van Buren was a former Democrat president, so, you know, he, he would get those people, but, um, yeah, so, you could go either way, if you go for the first option here, it excites the base of the north, but it also makes the base in the south and in outside, mostly outside of New, just New York in general, like, like probably go down. So what I do is just congratulate him. Just don't pay any attention because in our, in our world, it was it, one of the major factors for Zachary Taylor's win. He was the Whig nominee, um, was because the cat, the cast and uh, Van Buren division. That was one of the reasons. So you just want to continue that. So just congrat, just to, just congratulate him. Don't don't do any sectarian kind of. There's only one question where you do sectarian kind of stuff, but we'll get to that later. So. The central issue will be about the Mexican American War. So after the Mexican American War, there are a bunch of states. And it was debated whether they should be free or slave states. So the first option is the best option. So basically you play up your qualifications by talking about how you authored the Missouri Compromise in 1820. And yeah, just extend the Missouri Compromise. And it makes you look better because you're the one that actually authored the Missouri. And that was popular back in the day. And yeah, just it just plays yourself up, and it, and it says that you're doing something about slavery, the slavery issue. So, the second option is is too anti-slavery. I think you there are, there are less Southern Whigs than Northern Whigs, but you want to appeal to the Northern Whigs more. Or I'm uh, sorry, that's that's completely wrong. Uh, you should try to appeal to both sides as, as equal as possible. Um, so that, yeah, that, that second option is way too sectarian. The third option is too pro-South. You want, you want also Northern support, like I said. There's more Northern Whigs than Southern Whigs. Uh, the slavery issue, yeah, you want to address it because you want to, because it is a major issue in 1848, and, and you want to, you don't want to talk about dead issues like the tariff and, like, the treasury and all that kind of stuff like henry henry clay was a believer in an ideology called the american system which believed in high tariffs and internal improve like internal infrastructure and uh funding for education and that kind of stuff that's what henry clay's political and the Whig political philosophy was but uh yeah you want to say the first one so yeah, that it it gives you so you want to play up your experience instead of playing it down. So it talks about Harrison's for eighteen forty campaign. Uh, you don't want to portray yourself as a log cabin. So what Harrison did in eighteen forty, he he ran he ran a campaign where he pretend well he sort of was in the. William Henry Harrison, he was a he was from Virginia and he moved to Ohio. He was a military general. He fought in the War of eighteen twelve and against a bunch of Native Americans and campaigns against Native Americans. And Harrison in eighteen forty 
the economy was in a recession, like in a major recession. Um, Martin Van Buren was seen as like an elitist, um, because he he didn't do like enough about about he he was seen as being incompetent, not doing enough. So 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 sort of like Herbert Hoover, if if you know more about that, Herbert Hoover in nineteen thirty two, that was sort of the situation, but it was it wasn't nearly as bad though, but. Uh, Harrison portrayed himself as being, like, someone from the backwoods of America, like, like, he was an old man who lived in a log cabin, he was just like everybody else back, like, like a farmer, that's what he portrayed himself as, because he wanted to relate to people, like Andrew Jackson did before, so you don't want to do that strategy, so talk to you, talk about how you're the father of Missouri, and th these other two, um, don't compare yourself to Thomas Jefferson, because even though Henry Clay was a major statesman in American history, he's probably definitely one of the top three American statesmen. He, he wasn't, or top five, he probably wasn't, he's not Thomas Jefferson, especially, you want to compare yourself to that, it, it makes yourself look bad. So, I'd like to remain a above the fray that that's okay i i wouldn't pick i put the first option though yes because the missouri compromise is popular too and you authored it and millard fillmore you want to unite your party so now you don't want to say uh your ideas and policies are identical because he's a he's a taylor zachary taylor supporter um but yeah, you just say he's one of New York's best Whigs, and he 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 did rant. Yeah, another thing. This is off. To I'm sorry, I'm getting off topic a lot, but there's a lot of. It's very complicated. The 19th century American politics. Uh, Fillmore ran for governor in New York, and he only ran. He only lost. He lost, but he lost very narrowly, and he's very important in New York. So you you want to also pick him for that reason. So, yeah, the local focos are like the anti-slavery people. So you you, you want to... So what do you think of the liberal revolutions of Europe? So this is talking about 1848 revolutions. Uh, so, yeah, most, Americ all, most Americans supported that kind of stuff. So you want to... This is more non-interventionist. There's no reason to support that, though. So boycotting Austria, Hungary. Yeah, even though it's Louis Cass is the guy you're running against. I should have said I should have said that at the very beginning, but uh yeah, you, you wanna you wanna be as supportive as them because you know the, those those were revolutions against monarchies and that kind of stuff. And America's anti monarchist. So, yeah, I think you should just move on. I mean, yeah, the war is over. You shouldn't... The Mexican-American war is over. You could you could say this because it, it gets you emotional. But you do... I think you probably should move on. 